Hi, welcome to SoCali Wrestling. Today we have Selena de la Renta. How are you doing, Selena? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Right now it's kind of lagging. I do apologize for the viewers watching this. Uh, but I'm very happy that I got to have you as one of my guests for this week, right before Thanksgiving, which I know wrestlers hate or love Thanksgiving for some reason. It's a 50-50 thing. I love Thanksgiving. So it's cool. It's cool. I love Thanksgiving. Which, uh, for wrestlers, they don't have to do a weight cut. It's like, like versus a MMA fighter, it's like, oh, you have to be a certain uh, weight class. For wrestlers, there's no weight class. Except for one. Like a what? Uh, I, I'm saying there's no weight class for wrestlers because, except for one division, which is the cruiserweight division, which is the 205. But everything else, uh, there's no limits. I don't know if you can hear me right. I'm sorry if anybody's watching, but um, I can't hear you very well. You're cutting in and out. Oh, my apologies. Uh, can you hear me now, Selena? I can hear you, yes. Okay, I'll do my best, my part. Uh, so. Er, okay, not so you, the, it's the internet. Probably it is. We're probably here <laughs> <you're> outside. <laughs> but as the question I always ask every podcast, um, what intrigued you to become a wrestler? Is that something you wanted as a kid, or is that something you you start out as an adult by accident? It's like that wasn't your full, full, uh, full your type of choice. Well, when I was little, I always like saw my stepdad watching wrestling, and I wasn't allowed to watch it. So the first match that I ever like peeped was with the Boogeyman, and I saw him eating worms, and I thought it was the best thing ever. And my mom was like, "You're not allowed to watch that. Why did you watch it?" whatever so I basically just ran away and just hid in my room and played with my Barbies and then as I was growing up I just thought that I was going to be an actress I was into modeling dancing singing but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do I was just like really big fan of like performing arts and anything that was related to it then I moved to Florida to start studying filmmaking and I did it for, for like I'd say a year or a year and a half and then I was studying different films, and I decided to study Total Divas, which is a reality show. I'm pretty sure you know what it is. And then I was like, these women are doing this thing, and I think. Well, the Total Divas, is that you, you've been watching it since the, season, the first season? I'm still here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We lost Connection. here for, for almost close to a full minute. <laughs> it's all right. It's probably my fault because I live in the middle of nowhere. I live where nobody wants to live. Which so is Florida. In the woods, <laughs> and that's, my, that's my house right there. <laughs> no, I actually love Florida. It's well, the best thing ever. Which for you, Florida is, is a wrestling state. You have Pennsylvania, California. And Florida is one of them. Well, there's a couple more, but that's the one I as to me is main uh, uh, state of wrestling. Yeah. But did you grew up in Florida, or did you transfer out from state to state? No, I lived 17 years in Puerto Rico. Oh, and in Puerto Rico, oh, and, and from Puerto Rico to Florida. I was like, oh, the easy transition for you. Yeah, definitely. Originally, I wanted to move to Cali, but then my mom wanted to move with me as well. And it was easier to just move here to Florida. It was less expensive, too, if we're being honest. And that was, at first, I was so against the idea of living in Florida. It's like, well, man, what am I going to do? Go to Disney all the time. And then I moved here, and what do I do? Go to Disney all the time. It's like the best thing ever. <laughs> Uh, nothing wrong with that. And plus, again, you have a lot of wrestling schools in no, Florida, no. which you have um, Team 3D Academy, um, uh, was it, uh, Team Vision Dojo, which you're into yeah, the Team Vision go. Dojo. Yes. Say and, that again? 
no, uh, I was saying that you were in Team Vision Dojo. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm a Team Vision Dojo student. But how did you find out that that was the right school for you, one of the Team 3D Academy or other local wrestling schools in, within Florida State? I'm sorry, again, cutting in and out. Oh, I was saying, why did you chose Team Vision Dojo uh, versus Team 3D Academy or other local wrestling schools? Well, I'm a person that like goes with vibes, let's be honest. And I was calling different schools, and the place that I felt the most welcome in was Team Vision Dojo. And then also the location was really convenient for me. At the time, I didn't have a car, so I was just starting out in Florida. It was, like, brand new. It was really hard for me to move around or anything. And Team Vision Dojo happened to be five minutes away from me, and I already liked the way that they had treated me over the phone. And I was just, I'm going to go check it out. And as soon as I checked it out, everybody was really nice, and I just felt like that was my place. And when, once you started Team Vision Dojo, did you – Saying the first day you were there is like, oh my god, this is a pain ass. Why did I choose to become a wrestler? No, I loved it. I loved it. I thought at, at the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be really rough on my body. But then as soon as I took my first bump, I was like, this really sucks, but I really love it. And it's really, I don't know, it's like something I can't explain. It's just like, you, you hate the feeling, but you love the feeling. If it makes any sense. Oh, well, that's your intake of. Uh, it, it, basically, it's the vibes at, at the school that you kind of felt happy with. Yeah. Was there any people around the wrestling academy that you felt, oh my god, it's like uh, enemy, enemy, because you're you're a freshman to the school. Well, no, actually, I had a. I think I had one of the best experiences. I never, like, everybody there was really, really nice to me, especially Santana, because well, the first day that I was there, um, Santana was the person who greeted me, Santana Garrett. And, like, the way that she, that she behaves around people just, like, helps everybody to be in, like, a really good mood. And I just don't, I don't know if it's just, like, the people that were there at the time, but I never had, like, any problems from the very beginning. It was just, like... Everybody was on the same page. We were there for one reason, and it's just to work with each other and learn from each other. Uh, I kind of did a couple months ago with one of your classmates, uh, Reagan Fire. And she was my first uh, guest interviewer uh, for, that ever did at least two hours worth of interview. Uh, but she was telling me the team, team Vision Dojo was the right school for her. Uh, you guys do shows within the school itself. So you can bring uh, viewers, so people can uh, feel your vibe. If, if your character and your as a wrestling skills are perfect and not, they boo you as hell, regardless of your face or heel. It's like you're, they can tell you your opinion. But do you take that opinion of the wrestlers and the fans? Well, I like to open myself to different, you know, different people's opinions, and. Definitely, I think the crowd is something that you need to feed off from. And it, it would be hard for me to say that I did not take fans' opinions over wrestlers' opinions because it's not the same. Like, a wrestler opinion would be something that I take, and it might help me, like, be a better wrestler or become, like, a better person with the, within, like, the locker room ethic. And this is something that the fans don't see. Now, character-wise, then, yeah... I mostly feed off of my fans, and it's just whatever they like or whatever they hate, depending on, you know, what I work that day. And then your character is the sensual, seductive, but also kind of like Jerry Lopez, heel way. It's like, I ah, don't care about your opinion. It's like, I'm, more, I'm the object of the ring. It's like, it's all center attention to you. Yeah, it's kind of funny now that you say it. That's kind of how it is. <laughs> and then once I, I didn't listen to your. Never thought of it like that. Once I thir yeah. uh, I didn't hear your theme song until probably the second or third matches on YouTube, and I was like, oh my god, I was talking about Jennifer Lopez, and you have a song played by Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, it's 
it's a bit ironic. <laughs> I think it's great. I love Jennifer Lopez too, but I guess I would be the heel version of her. Well, hey, at least I'm putting there for those viewers like, oh, we can put you as a reference to Jennifer Lopez of wrestling. That's okay. I'm not gonna think about that. And then you call, you kind of gave yourself a nickname, or who gave you the nickname of the Booty Monster? That is a very funny story, actually. Originally, I, I did not have, like, a name or a nickname or anything like that. I was just wrestling. And um, I, as I was doing music with the guy that was helping me out, um, he put a song that said, Be Scared of the Booty Monster. And I was like, oh, my God, that's wonderful. I think I need this. And ever since, I just made it my thing, and I just say, be scared of, and people know already, Booty Monster. But it's, it's a song that never got, like, it really popular or anything. I don't even know the name of the song anymore. It was just, like, a drop. It said, be scared of the Booty Monster, and it dropped really hard. And I was like, okay, I, I like this. I don't, I, I didn't, didn't, I didn't, didn't even, need, I didn't even know there was a song called the Booty Monster until you were telling me. No, it's called the Booty Monster, because I've looked for it. It's called something else. And it just drops something, and it's called, and it says something about the booty monster. And I was like, well, I don't think anybody goes by the booty monster, so let me just get a hold of it because I like it. <laughs> and then you, and I'll take. I'm going to put this is a pain. So you kind of show off your booty all to the fans, regardless from child to your grandparents. Don't you feel <laughs> awkward to be there, you doing your little uh, twerking? Well, the most awkward thing for me ever was when my family told me that they were going to unfriend me because <laughs> it was too much. <laughs> okay. So at first, yes, it's awkward. And the, the original, like when I first started doing it, I started doing it like only privately. I was just showing my mom like, hey, what do you think about this entrance? And she's like, I think that's awesome. And then I show Santana and then I show Chelsea Green. <laughs> And then I was showing different people, and people are like, I think you should stick with that. So I went ahead and did it in front of everyone. People loved it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep doing it. And surprisingly, I started working for ACW maybe a year ago. And I was babyface for a bit of a time, I would say. And it got to a point where parents would bring their kids around me, and the kids would twerk with me. It was amazing. Like, I cannot... Like, was the probably the best part of my day was just showing up and dancing with little kids doing the booty dance and it wasn't even like something malicious i'm not trying to be like hey kids you should twerk no like that wasn't my my <laughs> that'd be the show. message yeah this kids twerk. Happening. <laughs> it was just hilarious if, if i think the booty dance is something everybody can do no matter how old you are and it doesn't have to be sexual it's just it's just a booty dance. It's funny. It's fun. But did you, did you, you were doing it as a heel than the face, correct? Um, I was doing. I, I started working heel, I could say, and then eventually my character just turned baby, and then it turned heel again. I just, I don't know. It just turns however it wants to be. What do you prefer choosing the being a heel or being a face? I, I don't. I just, I just love my job. So it doesn't really matter what choice, unless you you're happy with what character you got and being happy uh, happy to entertain the fans. That's correct. They do. I mean, after all, they're paying to see me, so I I want to make sure that they're entertained. Cause why pay a ticket for someone that's boring? Exactly. Who wants to go to a show that's has a boring wrestlers? Not me, for sure. Exactly. Not me either. I don't want to be part of that show. But it's kind of funny that you see it, the tw again, being the movie monster you, you call yourself, that you don't see it as a sexual appeal. It's more of, um, how do I put that as uh, a, a character type for you that's more fun. But do you still kind of feel it yeah. is a, excellent as a sexual object with the movie, as being the movie monster? I don't like to say that my character is a sexual character because I don't like what I do. It's just attack people with my butt. It's just not 
a sexual thing. It's just an attack way. It's so for me, it's just like, I don't know. I think it's just a funny, entertaining character that everybody can just enjoy. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't have to be. I don't I don't come out just with my butt out. You know, it, it, just, if, so it's more like com- it's like a comedic thing for you. For me, it's just fun. Yeah. Comedic would be the, would be the right thing. But you're not the only one that's been doing that too. You have your tag team partner at time to time, Area Blake. How's that? How is it? How you how you guys felt working together as a tag team, you and Area Blake? Well, I think I could have not chosen anybody better to tag with than Arya, because Arya is, in real life, my best friend. So for me to have like that kind of chemistry with someone, it needs to be someone that I like genuinely enjoy being around. And Ari and I originally were not going to tag. We were just good friends. And one day we were just asked to tag in a match. We were just put together. And Aria called me and was like, hey, what do you want to wear? And then I was like, okay, I, I like this vibe. I like, you know, like wearing something similar. I like the idea of coming out to the same song. And I like working together. And then at the end of that night, everybody was like, guys, you guys killed it. You should be together. Like, I really like this as a team. It's a good concept. And then from there, Ari and I were just like, I think this would be great for us. It would be great for us. And it's really hard to find somebody in the business that has the same drive as you and have the same goals. Unfortunately, like some, like some girls and I don't necessarily click that way that we can just work that well together. And finding someone like that that has the same passion and is just willing to make the effort with me. It was pretty awesome. You say she was your best friend. You mean like she was best friends with you like before the wrestling or did you met her uh, since the Academy? Okay. Hold on. I can't hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was saying that, you were uh, you and Area Blake were best friends. So, like, did you guys were best friends before wrestling or at the school itself? No, no, we we were good friends before tagging, and then we became best friends as we started tagging. We met wrestling. Like my first eight matches were probably with Arya, and we did not train together either. We just, she is a Jay Lethal student. I trained in Team Vision Dojo. So we just met in wrestling. And we happened to share a lot of like the same ideas and same likes. So you, so you girls are almost linked together. It's like, oh, we have similar bonds and similar interests, um, both passionate to wrestling itself. But did you guys figure out a tag team name for you and uh, you and Area Blake? Yeah, I can say that we we sat down and we were talking like if we do a tag it, like what what were we gonna do? And we just decided that we were gonna go with the spoiled brats. We have sep- like different names in our mind, and I think the spoiled brats was the most fitting one. Cause we do, we do get spoiled every once in a while. Yeah, um, and sometimes I, it can be a little. Crazy. Well, there was one. I was again watching you and your area Blake together tag team. There was one match you guys telling the fans like, "Hey, if you want to take pictures, you gotta pay to take the picture of us." I don't remember that, but I that sounds like something we would say. <laughs> well, that's why it's like I. Just one day, it was like, you know, I'm really interested between you and Area Blake together as the tag team. There's actual um, fan interaction, should I say. Yeah, we, it just depends. I don't, I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's just, I don't know. That's a hard thing to just explain. Well, I got two more questions. Uh. I know you're, you have a busy schedule with you, but this is very quick. You were seeing, you having mentioned names about uh, Santana Garrett, Chelsea Green. Um, Chelsea Green working for TNA. Santana used to work for TNA, but she already has a big name for herself. Um, who else was with you and trained at the Team Vision Dojo that's 
famously, or who's becoming the next big thing? Um, well, I train with Lindsay Barado. Um, Ricardo Rodriguez is one of my other trainers. Aaron Epic, Jason Rams. I have, like, different people that has, have helped me. Um, I don't know. The, uh, a lot of people have gone through my school, so it's not like I can just give you a whole list because we will probably not be done talking today. No, and then you would be. People that have gone through that school. And then you'd be late for the show. <laughs> I will be definitely be late for my show. <laughs> and then I'll be the one causing you troubles. Like I don't want that between the interviewer and the interviewee. I'll blame you, one hundred percent. Thank you. Kidding. That's so nice of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very nice. <laughs> well, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, for those who's watching and finding you for the first time, uh, Selena de la Renta. Selena de la Renta. There you go. See. Uh, where can they follow you? If you have merchandise, can buy from you. I know you've been doing that this past week with selling your wrestling gear. Um, other merchandise you'll be selling for wrestling fans or collectible. Uh, uh, people who likes to collect wrestling gear, I mean, um, social media, uh, next shows. Um, well, all my social medias are Selena De La Renta, so you, you just write my full name, you can find me on social media. Um, for my merchandise, you would have to message me directly to my email, which is Selena De La Renta at gmail dot com. Um, I do sell some of my outfits, so if anybody's interested, just message me and I, I'll i provide like the pictures of what's for sale. Um, we also have the spoiled rack calendars right now. Out is uh, me versus, I mean, it's me and Aria. We both sign the calendars and we send them out. And uh, let me see what else. What else? Today I'm going to be at Rex versus Cancer and Newport Richie is a benefit show. Um, Coming up next, I have ATW on Wednesday. I know I have a show on Sunday, but I would lie to you if I say I remember which one is it is. Um, <laughs> That's fine. I don't know. It's crazy. It's a really crazy schedule. Also, if you use the code Booty Monster at Collar and Elbow, you get 10% off. Oh, you so oh, that. and you're a sponsored athlete, which I'm a sport uh sponsored at, um ambassador for Collar and Elbow. Yes. Like well, coincidence, but all right, so we can do. Oh. The color. I will put I'll put the your code in my uh code as well for color and elbow for those this and I'm first time actually putting it sponsorship out there. But again, Selena, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for coming to SoCal Wrestling, and hopefully to, to do a part two while in more uh static friction within our internet service. And then hopefully yes. bigger things will come. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you, Selena.